Hey everyone, it's Carrie and welcome to another video. I have not disappeared. I have just been so busy lately trying to get stuff done for my market and whatnot and just life in general. And I decided today to take my phone case off, hoping that the quality might be better for y'all. And guess what? I didn't realize it because I have this life proof. The whole back of my iPhone is shattered. This is the second phone within a extremely short period of time. I swear that something is changing with the quality that these people make these phones because I've had iPhones for ever and I purposely don't drop them that like I've been making an effort not to drop my phones and oh my gosh the whole back is shattered so I'm gonna have to go get a whole new iPhone again I literally just did that two months ago maybe maybe two months it might have even been one not a happy camper today I wanted to come on here y'all my cat keeps getting wrapped up in my yarn <laughs> come on girlfriend I wanted to come on here and make a video since it has been a little bit of a hot minute. So you guys grab whatever project you're working on. Let's talk about a topic that I have gotten a few questions on and I'm more than happy to talk about it. I will just go out and say like, this is the way I do it and that doesn't necessarily make it the best way <laughs> or the correct way. So just want to let that be known because there's just so many different ways to do business in general. So just keeping that in mind, I wanted to talk a little bit about customs, how I do my customs, how I got started in customs. Pretty much off the bat, got customs, I would say fairly early on. And I want to say probably like two, three weeks after I even started crocheting. You know, most of my customs I've been pretty pleased with. I think there was only one custom that I was like a little bit iffy on, but I've pretty much always felt confident enough that I could do it once I got into plush yarn. At times, personally for me, I have a lot more people who want customs done with plush yarn than acrylic. Maybe keep that in mind for anybody who's possibly looking at doing customs. I think if you can have a variety of products, it's good. But one of my, I would say, pitching things at a market is when people come to my booth and they'll, you know, touch the plushies or whatever. And they'll touch something with plush yarn and then they're like, oh, this would be great for like a baby or da 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 you know so i think having like that variety is also really good say i've done a good deal of customs now i think i've only had about one that was acrylic i would just throw out a random number and say like one out of 20 25 there's not many acrylic ones. So I think if you're like an acrylic poured uh, crochet person, it might be a little harder. If you're trying to sell plushies, I'm not 100% certain. Where I go to markets, that's how most people do customs for me, is a lot of times I will, when people are looking, if there's like something that they don't see, they'll ask me, hey, do you like make this type of animal? I'll say, well, I can. I always, pretty much my thing is, if there's a pattern written up for it, I can make it. I've never had any difficulty when it comes to reading patterns. So if there's a pattern, I can do it no problem. Being able to pretty much tell anyone that you can do pretty much anything they want is always going to draw people in. And I do have business cards. <laughs> Thank you, Sketty. I do have business cards, so a lot of times what I tell people is they'll ask me if I can make like a certain thing, a certain animal. I say, yes, I can. So there's a lot of different patterns to choose from. So I usually tell them to contact me via the provided information on the business card. 
I typically put my email and like my website and everything. I think at one point I had, <laughs> sorry guys, Skitty's glitching out. I think at one point I had like my phone number on the back of it and then my recent set of business cards, I took my phone number off, but I'm actually gonna put my phone number back on just because of the fact that I don't check my email enough where I think it's like a good form of communication. <laughs> I'm really bad about checking my email. I'm usually like a once or twice a day type of gal, maybe. That's how the conversation usually gets started. Something along the line of someone being like, hey, can you make this? And I say, yeah, I can make it. And from there, it's a hit or miss. I can't tell you how many markets I go to and how many times I've had people who are just like, seem so committed to wanting to get something done and they'll take a business card all this type of stuff and then i'll never hear from again i would say if like there were 10 people i would say eight or nine out of 10 people are like that it's the occasional one or the occasional two that i will actually get like an email or a text and even then sometimes it's difficult to get past that stage as well. If somebody contacts me and they're interested, what I do is, since a lot of times I use other people's patterns or like a lot of times somebody will text me like, hey, I found this pattern, can you make it? That type of scenario. I will get a variety of patterns if they are open to looking at just like, they just wanna see all of their options. I will go on things like Etsy. I would say most of my patterns come from Etsy. Ribbler, things like that. I'll go through, take pictures of the patterns, send them over, and then see which one they like best. This is a catch-22. I probably will be changing this in the future, possibly, because a lot of times I'll get customs and I won't have the pattern beforehand. So I will have to go out of my way and purchase a pattern. So I've considered to possibly add like that into the custom price of like, hey, you know, if the pattern was like $5, add it on to the end price because it is money coming out. But sometimes I also think of it like, well, once I buy the pattern, I've got the pattern. So a lot of times I end up making that same pattern like possibly later on for somebody else or possibly for myself with market. I'm undecided how I'm gonna handle that. I've definitely thought about it. Once I have the pattern, I'll typically buy the pattern if I need to, look through it and give them a quote. So sometimes this part also bites me in the butt because of the fact that I will sometimes purchase said pattern and then text a person and be like, hey, it's gonna be you know, this much money and then I'll never get a reply. So I've also bought this pattern and then I'm kind of like stuck. So it's definitely something I'm gonna look at doing, like figuring out more in the future if I was doing a ton of customs. The pattern, I look through it. I always ask people, hey, do you want acrylic? Do you want plush? Because I do believe that there should be a price difference. I think this is important for anyone who possibly wants to do customs is please for the love of god because i have learned my lesson when you quote a custom put this is a rough estimate it can be changed upon completion I definitely recommend for everybody when you are doing customs to word it that way a few times when i first started i would give a price and i thought it would be about right with the hours and the time and the supplies but then it ended up being wrong now when i do customs i always say this is a rough estimate it can be changed the likelihood is if it were to change it would increase in price it's never usually anything too drastic where i'm like oh there's an increase of 30 dollars but i would say you know sometimes it's an increase of five to ten dollars sometimes i just recently was doing a commission that I went out of my way to make certain that I had all of the information beforehand, everything figured out, and I had a feeling something like this might happen, which is why I really went out of my way to cover my steps. And still, there was a good deal of difficulty throughout the process, and I had to waste a lot of materials because 
there was just a lot of changing of minds <laughs> constantly. These are things that I definitely think if you kind of put in and if you let somebody know at the beginning of a project, it's never as bad of a shock as waiting to the end. And then two, if you have it like a text or something, uh, to make sure and I have it in a text format, then if somebody were to say, well, you know, you didn't say that, then you can just always go back, screenshot it and be like, well, if you look here in the original message, I did say that this was a rough estimate that could possibly be changed to increase. I will do deposits on occasion if I don't know somebody, but a lot of times the people who I've done commissions for have been like friends or family or they've been people that I see like every single week at a market. I haven't felt the need quite to yet. If I were somebody who maybe like didn't have the supplies and whatnot, I would probably want to get a deposit just to cover my basis. It's generally most of the time I have pretty much all the yarn I need to have. I don't worry about really taking a deposit. My mindset has always been a lot of the times when I get customs, they have all been things that I would consider to be very sellable. So even if somebody backed out, it doesn't really worry me too much because I think that a lot of times I could just take that product and then just turn around and go sell it on market. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> I get very loose rough estimates on timelines. I always explain to people that I do not do this full time. I mean, I could just consider it full time with how much I've been doing it, but I do have a, another job that does take up a lot of time as well. And a lot of times I'm doing custom work in between prepping for markets and whatnot. So I usually explain to people like I need comfortably, I would love a week is usually what I ask for. Sometimes I don't get a week and if I have somebody who wants an order with a very quick turnaround as in a day depending on what it is I can sometimes push it out in two days but like a super quick turnaround I do recommend charging some type of fee for you know expediting it I guess you could say because for me like if somebody texts me was like hey can I get XYZ by tomorrow and if I'm doing like maybe somebody else's custom or I'm doing market prep, then I've got to, or like my other job, I have to put everything else aside just to do that. And so I do charge more. There's definitely a lot of different ways to handle customs. Like I said, I'm not saying that my way is correct. It's just been the way that I have been doing things recently. I will say that if you're somebody who is looking at doing customs, of course, the best thing and I think the best way you're going to get customs is of course being out in front of people. I don't push my social media as hard as I probably should push my social media just because I really do try and stay away from a lot of social media as I have gotten a little bit older. I used to be very involved in it. And I enjoy the social media aspect, but I probably enjoy like the creating aspect more. So I don't have the strongest or biggest following on social media, but I am typically at markets every single week, whether they're farmers markets, whether they're big markets. So I think if you're looking at doing it, you have to like step back and think like, am I somebody who's doing I don't know, a market once a month, once every other month, then you probably should really be focusing on building your social media because that's probably where you're getting the most eyes on your stuff on a consistent basis versus somebody who's maybe like me who does so many markets so consistently every single week and I've been able to build a connection with so many people that I see. Social media is great and I like, trust me, I need to do so much with my social media. <laughs> but there is that difference. There's been a few customs that I've gotten have been like people who just see me every single week for, you know, a couple weeks. I mean, I have just like brief conversations with them and then that off chance, they just come up and they're like, hey, I've seen you, can you do da 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 da. So there is that difference there. 
that I think people should also take into account. The thing I will leave you on is what I would recommend for people who do markets. A lot of times when I do custom orders, there'll be things that I necessarily don't bring to markets to begin with. And so I pretty much early on decided that I was gonna have a book that I kept on my table and it just says plushy catalog on it. But every time I do like a custom order or every time I do like a new form of plushy, I will take a picture of a plushy and then I will get that picture printed out or like some of my bouquets I usually get that picture printed out and then i keep a whole catalog that basically includes any of my customs any new products because of the fact that i do markets with such close turnaround there's a lot of times where i'll make something for one market and i just physically cannot get it done for the following market or maybe two markets maybe three markets so having the plushy catalog just show like some of the things that i've done previously also makes it where sometimes people will come up and they'll be like, hey, can you make this again? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And then that's how I get it as well. So I definitely recommend having that. I mean, think of it like somebody going to a portfolio on your website, except this is a physical thing that does not require an extra step of somebody going through, you know, your website, your QR code, physically looking it up. Like this is just smack in front of them. And a lot of times, I go out of my way and reach over because it's on my table and I'll say, you know, if you don't see anything you like here on the table, look through this book and I'll either open the book or most people usually like go to the book when I say that, but I'll open the book or somebody will say, oh, I love bees. And then I'll be like, okay, look at all these things that I've made with bees because I have like my bee bear, my bee bouquets that are in my book, uh, business cards my time doing markets has been very limited i think like three months probably and i have gone through at least 200 business cards i'm about to order more but i'm hoping to get my logo in sometime so i don't want to order them like before then kind of the things that i recommend having and of course i would say the biggest fundamental is your personality and how outgoing you are really does make a difference in getting orders and selling things so the best thing you can do is just try and put yourself out there a little bit and be comfortable i'm fortunate that i've always been a outgoing individual who really doesn't have much like shame like that's why i can sit on a camera and like don't care what i do so i do think that that's also a really big factor so if you're Wanting to get customs, just put yourself out there in a way that, you know, even if it's small conversations to connect with people over time, it will build up and you don't have to like pitch a sale every single time, but forming a connection really does help. You guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye.